you talked yesterday about trying to take that next step, the defense. Yep. How do you get that to translate to the offense? Uh, you had the spark last week. Uh, what do you have to do to be better there? And, and I don't think just the offense. I think, Teresa, this is a critical time for us as a football team. We are 4-4. Four and four. Um, We've won two games in a row. Um, there's no bye uh, this week. We are, just like every other team in the National Football League, I would say operating at less than 100%. And it's a vicious game. And so there's a fine line between trying to to improve on the practice field, which is what you have to do, and work on the practice field, and make sure that our guys are, are ready to play, that we, we are trying to take care of the guys that, that need to be taken care of, but also improving. Um, you know, offensively, there are um, definitely signs, and there it was inconsistent, and it was tough. We knew sometimes that the run game was going to be tough sledding, um, but we also knew that if we committed to it, that you know we could potentially break a couple, which... We did. We were on the post safety um, three times. Um, we had a 42-yarder that that got called back, um, and and then and then we we weren't able to secure the football. We made some good throws. Um, we made some really great catches, but then uh, and there were some good pockets. And then there were other times where there weren't. And so, uh, trying to just be more consistent with, with some of those plays and and not have the you know, the negative runs or that put us behind the chains, the penalties. But, you know, we overcame a, a first and 20 on a, on a huge drive at the end of the game um, with some good checks, by with some good throws, um, and then ultimately touched down there with A.J. So, um, you know, we've been able to score. We took advantage of the game, really came down to the red zone. Uh, I was proud of uh, defensively what we were able to do. Um, could have been better, but, you know, making them, them kick field goals early and then what our offense did – you know, to be able to to throw it in to the end zone and, and, and Johnu making a fantastic catch and you know and AJ and, and everybody else, Tajay. So it was good to see. Why is it that Why is asking so much more efficient in the red zone the last couple of weeks? Well we made a huge commitment to it in the spring. Um, when you have the, the, the passing camps, the the non contact OTAs that you know, you're trying to establish um, you know a base foundation. And then work some plays off of it. Maybe uh, each week that you you feel like um, are a scheme play, but but I do think that the players um, are comfortable in what's being called and what they're being asked to do. Um, you know, Tajay, we continue to practice. You know, I mean, Tajay's had good weeks of practice. You know, did, did a great job on the fade ball. Um, you know, a, a route that we worked with AJ over and over to try to. Um, have a lot of confidence in it. Um, and then in, in Janu's case, um, a, a player that, that ran a decisive route, um, it was a little behind him. Uh, he made a great catch. Uh, and I think there was just good timing on that route. On the, on the fake, on the fake what, made, what made the idea of Brett getting 10 yards more appealing to you than the offense getting two? Well, and I think that um, certainly um, appreciate that concept. Um, you know, you see that a lot if you know, teams run uh, speed option on third and one and they dish it back, balls at seven yards, then you have to gain eight. Um, it, it really came down to um, where we were on the field, having the look that we had practiced for that, that wanted to run it against. Um, so th that decision did not turn out to uh, – we didn't execute it, and so we have to continue to move on, give our guys all the credit in the world. Um, in all three phases, um, we, we had a really nice kickoff return. We have to fix the, the punt return, um, but I felt like we kicked the ball well. Um, the defense, being able to create turnovers, take advantage of, of those things uh, when Jameis gave us a chance um, to, to give our offense great field position. That play is executed correctly. Does it work in your mind? Well, yeah. I mean, Jim, I think that if any play is executed correctly, you know, that it's going to work. And there, again, I go back that there's a lot of decisions that, that occur during the course of the game, guys. And you know, we we, we make them, um, and they they don't work. You know, we're trying to to win the game. 
that, that's what we're trying to do in each and every opportunity that we have to make a decision. Uh, no, Devin White made an absolutely fantastic play. So, um, you know, we need to execute it, um, you know, better in order to get it. It, it. it didn't work. It was a play, you know, we can sit down and we can, you know, there's 168 snaps in the game and there were plays that, that we made and that, uh, you know, they're going to coach and there was plays that we didn't make that, that we need to coach. When you were super aggressive on that play where you said we're trying to win the game, which you seem to try to do with that one call where you say, this wins the game because we maintain possession and we end it. But then the, the general offensive game plan seems conservative. Um, and I'm trying to come to terms with the, with the two things, where with the one play you're trying to win the game with the big punch, but with the overall thing uh, against a pass defense that hasn't been that good, and we ask you about it, you say, well, they played good defense. Well, they really did, you know what I mean? And so we, there were opportunities that, that we left out there and, you know, the, the the game plan. I think that that's where you. Um, I've I've always kind of um, as a player. I think and as a coach, um, whatever the call is, um, it, it should be played and executed, and we should play with the same energy and, and finish and effort. Whether if it's a cover two uh, defense or if it's an all out blitz, so that's the mentality that we hope that we can instill whether it's an inside run, an outside run, uh, a shot to Khalif or a deep pass, um, any of those. I, mean, I think that's the, the mindset. I think that that's where um, I, I don't ever want to kind of coach like, oh, this is just a, a base defense and it shouldn't be aggressive. And this is a blitz. And so now we should all of a sudden play faster or this is a play action pass. Um, you know, or this is a, a screenplay. I mean, they all need to be executed with the same um, energy, excitement, fundamentals, um, the, the effort, you know, all the details that go into every play. So, um, you know, we, we have a game plan that we think, you know, can, can help our players take advantage of their skill sets, um, try, try to work and mix in different runs against a, a very good run defense. And um, again, not, not very consistent, but, but in times that we needed it, um, you know, we were able to execute in some critical situations. When you analyze after the game, you analyze the whole team, and you look at some of those decisions that you've made that have worked and that haven't worked, and you brought up yesterday how you hear questions on the ones that don't work and not the ones that do work. How much do you analyze yourself watching the film saying, okay, was this a good decision that wasn't executed right, or should maybe I have thought the other way when going back and looking at yourself? Every single minute of the day. I mean, I think that it starts with me. It starts with um, how I lead this team, how the message that I have, the keys that I think are critical uh, to win. I was just typing. Um, it starts with me and how I can uh, get this team to, to operate and function and understand how we have to be great and, and, and critical situations because the games are going to be close. I think that's, that's where the majority of the games in this league are. Um, the decisions that we make um, on the calls that we make, the calls and decisions that I make, I mean, obviously, I mean, I, I mean, it's probably not much fun. God bless her heart. But, I mean, you go home and it's like that's all we do. You know, we, that's all I do. Think about it, analyze it, um, try to get better, and then come back the next week, um, you know, was proud of the players, the way they played, the effort. Um, you know, Jarrell and, and how he you know, attacked that last play on fourth and one. Uh, you know, Nate hanging in there, Jamal Davis hanging in there against you know two werewolves, man, two massive inside players that are talented and good, and he's battling. I mean, that's that's what I'm most proud of. And then we do that all the time. I do that all the time. We do that with the coaches all the time. I mean, that's not just something like we're just like, okay, we would say, how will we do this differently? You know, do we like this call at the end of the game with, you know, the defense that we were playing? Um, how much time that they have? They threw it in bounds. You know, we had to keep them in bounds. And you know, when we did that, you know, they ran 18 seconds off the clock and gained 12 yards. And so those are things that we're trying to tell our players that, hey, that's great. We're executing the situation. Um, so we always analyze it to answer your question. If you Some NFL teams that, that kind of enlisted data analytics companies, you know, that, that, that 
can help situationally. What are your, your thoughts on, on, you know, outside help with analytics? Is that something the Titans do? Would they ever do it? I'm sure it would be something that we would always consider. We're always trying to consider things, um, you know, whether that's at a consultant level or um, finding somebody to, to, to put on a staff. I mean, I think that any, anytime you can use numbers um, to your advantage, uh, you have to try to do it. You also have to try to, you know, make some decisions, um, you know, when the numbers are close. Um, but th I don't think that crunching numbers – um, is going to go anywhere. Um, you know, it's something that, you know, allows a lot of people to, to be involved uh, in a game um, that's very unpredictable, and they try to make it predictable. What percentage of the time in the league do you think a hard count on fourth down results in a first down? I, I don't know. Has it worked here? Oh, I don't know. I know they jumped three or four times earlier in the game. But on fourth down, it tends to be different, correct? I, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you either way. I mean, you can, if you're asking a question with already knowing the answer, um, I couldn't tell it to you. I just know through the course of the game, you know, they were either called for offsides or were offsides and uh, weren't called for it. So, you know. So far this year, Derek has the most negative rushes in the league. What's maybe going wrong there and what can change to get that to try to get them the line of scrimmage so they don't count as negative runs. I, I, I wish I could tell you it has to be better, obviously, um, because, you know, you break them. You know, when you can break them, you get them to the second level. Um, you know, we've got to cover guys up and you know, make good reads. Um, you know, get the play started. And you know, that's critical is, you know, when, when runners, especially Derek, you know, can try to get into his, you know, fourth or fifth step. It's a little different, um, you know, than a guy you know, with a different skill set. I mean, everybody's very aware of what his skill set is, uh, and if we can get him into his fourth or fifth step, you know, we feel very confident uh, in his ability and in our ability to to gain meaningful yards. But if we can't do that, um, that's hard to, you know, ask him to to make some of those cuts that a smaller, you know, quicker back would make. Correa flashed a little bit yesterday, but there was one play where he had a good rush, but did he, what, what did he need to do better there to get Winston on the ground? Was it just something changed in his technique, slow down a little bit, or what did you see on that play? Didn't make the play on the quarterback. I mean, quarterback pump, I mean, pump faked it, and I mean, coming out of there on a, on a boot, and if he, if, he, if he slows down, he just probably dumps it over his head, and I mean, he's coming, he's going hard, and she wasn't able to make the play. Mike, was and then we, Davis, and I think we missed a tackle. Uh, Corey Davis need more, more snaps, or was that maybe a result of the illness he had earlier in the week? Corey, I don't know how many snaps did he play. 46, if I remember correctly. I mean, uh, I, 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 I think that those guys, uh, you know, I think Tajay deserves snaps, I think. Humps those are snaps, and, and Corey, I think they all do, you know. And so we'll kind of see where it goes based on, you know, each week um, and how everybody feels. Could you tell that Tampa was making a, you know, preparations for him based on what they saw in that, in that first game? Um, I don't know if they would have known consistently where he would have been based on 21 snaps. Um, you know, I know that that was a talented, rested football team, you know. I think our guys battled, very proud of how they, they played. Um, I, I would say that he felt better today than he did last Monday. So that would be probably the most um, positive thing that I would take from that, that you know, after his second NFL game, coming back from what he came back from, that he, he feels better uh, today. So that just means he's, you know, getting, getting used to it and understanding that, you know, there's going to be some – you know, bumps and bruises or soreness, and so he felt a lot better today. Mike, you guys, the first two games at home, you played fourth quarter games that you couldn't come up with the play and lost. Now the last two weeks you've won it basically with 
last minute, last second stands. Is there a value in being able to flip that switch? And I don't know if it's learning how to win, but to win those types of games? Well, I think that to, to appreciate uh, playing in close games, being, being up in that game yesterday, being down in that game, battling, coming back and, and, and being up and then finishing the game off, um, I, that, that's why I'm proud of this team because I don't think we have we have front runners that uh, you know only are soaring high when we're up 14 to three um, you know, that they battled and, and, and came back and were able to withstand the, the ups and downs of the of the game and the, the highs and the lows and um, kind of just that journey you take throughout the course of a game and trying to go back out the next series and, and do something a little better. What has John Ooh done to be successful when called upon this year? Just continue to work. You know, he's a he's a tireless worker. He's got a great attitude. He comes to work every single day, um, ready to learn, ready to improve. He's focused in meetings. Um, Todd's worked. Uh, Todd Downing's worked very well with him, one on one. You know, they 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 get a lot of these one on one meetings sometimes um, during special teams periods when when Johnu can can get some extra time with Todd. Um, and so it's just been you know. It's always refreshing to see good things happen to great people. I think John is a, a great person, great player, great teammate. The last two weeks, you guys have had two of your longer, better put together drives on offense. What is it? Obviously, a team game, but what is it that Ryan Tannehill is doing to keep this uh, offense on schedule and just efficient like that? Well, I think the biggest thing that Ryan did probably yesterday is he got us into two great checks. He got us into two blitz zero checks. That allowed us um, to protect it just long enough. Understand when they're in blitz zero, however many you guys have blocking, they're going to have one extra, right? And so uh, you just have to kind of keep adding guys to the protection uh, to force the free as the, the free guy to be as far away from the quarterback as possible. And he did that twice. Uh, threw a great pass to Humphreys on third down. Threw a great pass to John. O, uh, excuse me, Tajay on third down. Um, so. Um, you're going to have to you know, pick up some critical third downs along a 10 or 12 play drive um, that it comes down to dropping back and, and finding the guy open uh, pretty quick. On the offense, what are some of the things that, I guess throughout a game, go into the decision-making process of personnel groupings and snap counts? Is it a, a stamina thing? Is it we like these guys together versus these guys together? Can you walk us through that? Um, you know, those change. I mean, I think that trying to, to um, you know, mix personnel, they, you know, is they a team that, that matches? How are they playing um, your second tight end? Are they playing them in base? Are they playing in nickel? Um, what coverages do you get out of certain personnel groups, which would all be, you know, analytically based? Um, but then you come into the games and like, okay, this is how they're playing us. And those those numbers quite don't add up to where they were before the game. You're like, okay, this is how they're playing us. And so, you know, we're going to have to try to adjust and, and make adjustments. Um, and then as far as players go, I think there's certain plays that guys have that, you know, they're in the game for that they, you know, maybe that play might be designed for them or, or not. Um, sometimes guys do need a break. Sometimes guys need a rest and that'll all determine you know, when they're out there. Correct me if I'm if I misunderstood, but th I think you said something yesterday about uh, as you got to water level, um, being being pleased that you managed to to get to where you were last year. But the the whole theme of the off season was that last year wasn't satisfactory. No, it, no, it wasn't. My point, I, I, I again, I'm, I'm not going to try to correct you. Um, with whatever you understood. I just was saying that the NFL season has, has begun. Like it's November now or whenever it's going to be here. Now we're playing games. Every game going on forward from November is really when the NFL season um, begins. And, and we're in a position um, to do something, you know, with um, that going forward is all I've said. After what, the way we started um, being two and four and now being four and four, to start this push, um, I guess that's all I was alluding to. Is that fold, I guess, in pro concussion protocol move? He forward? is. I think Kelly Freeman only got a handful of snaps for you, but it, it looks like with one of them, he, he got a 
little bit behind the defense. Was he able to show his speed and what it could do for you a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yep. And I, you know, just again, the, the guy has the ball, the quarterback has the ball, and he's got to make a decision um, on what he feels um, the ball needs to go. But, you know, Khalif had a nice return. It was well blocked. There was a lot of great efforts on that uh, kickoff return. And then, um, you, you know, a few, the few plays he had in there, I thought, you know, he was running and, and, and showing some speed. If you, if you make the fake uh, yesterday, still about three and a half yep. minutes left. Two timeouts, and the, yeah, the right, and hopefully that that takes them down there under, you know, under two, and we're able to, you know, score, kick the field goal, you know, give them the football with with no time and and, and, and everything else with, you know, the situation. So the big hope there was to take the timeouts from Tampa by getting. Well, the big game. hope was to go get the first down on a play that we really love, you know, the play that we've worked, um, for a long time against a, a look that we wanted. Um, didn't get it. Didn't execute it. Um, and, and so, you know, again, all the credit to the players for, for finishing the game. You know, for finishing the game. Uh, defensive stand. You know, Evans was having a day. Talented receiver. Uh, caught some, some amazing passes. Um, you know, he caught the back, back half of the ball you know, over there. I thought Kenny was, was in, in pretty good position. Um, and you just got to see his length in his hands, you know, it's what what the National Football League is about, and um, you know we our guys made some some good adjustments, and um, you know we're able to take him out of there, but he was having a day. Again, I just try to um, worry about the calls that we have the opportunity to challenge. Um, they, they they blew the whistle again. There's a lot of plays that that go into the game. On both sides. What are, your, what are your early thoughts on the Panthers? Well, they probably have one of the most dynamic running backs um, in the league, as far as from a, a rushing and a receiving standpoint. Um, you know, it looked like Allen had got off to a really good start. I guess he threw some interceptions yesterday. Not sure where Cam will be, but obviously. Um, Based on his health and his ability to, to throw the football and to run the football, um, any defense that that has Luke Keekley on it um, is going to be a, a very good defense. Uh, just enjoy watching him play from an instinctive um, standpoint, a production standpoint, and a leadership standpoint. So, again, every challenge is every week is a challenge, and um, you know we need to do everything we can here to to get started on on Carolina and, and getting our players uh, you know, ready to, to compete against them. And on the, on, on the fake, was it, did you know when they ran out there that the fake was going to be run or was it, hey, if Brett sees this look, then Yeah, there's some different things that go and involve with a lot of plays that we have on defense, special teams, and offense that you have the ability to get in and out of plays. And so that's what we try to do. We try to give them the best opportunity to, to get into the right play, whether that be Brett, whether that be Ryan, that be Kevin Byard. In, in all three phases, uh, we're, we're trying to give them options to get in and out of the correct play. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank Appreciate you. it.